What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror with Squiddy back in another Squiddy Hill. Today, I want to talk to you guys about how to beat the Chimera Branded deck. As you guys all know, this deck took a lot of regionals by storm over the past couple of weekends. Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts, is now $30 USD and is selling in the masses. People were like, wow, this deck is good. I did not expect this level of representation. I'm actually absolutely shocked. I knew the deck was good. If you guys are following the channel, you know that we've been playing it since it came out. I wanted to play the deck potentially for an upcoming YCS or regionals, but the fact of the matter is the people need to know. You guys need to know how to beat this deck because it's so darn oppressive when left unchecked. So let's talk about how to beat this deck. This is a typical end board that you guys will be staring down that's all made off of one card, aka Mirror Sword Knight. You can see our opponent has five cards in their hand. They have the Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts, which is going to rip a random card in our end phase. And then they also have a Mirror Sword Knight that was resurrected back with Big Wing Burfamet. They have a set Chimera Fusion on the table, and they have a Coatl Cornfield in the graveyard, which can negate cards at target. And they also have the Mirror Sword Knight, which will be tributed on our draw step to summon back out a second copy of Burfamet. So they have Recursion. It's absolutely nuts. So they're going to be able to special summon out a Burfamet on our draw phase, add a copy of Chimera Fusion, and add a copy of Gazelle. So now they have a whopping seven cards in their hand and they have a Mirror Sword Knight in the graveyard that we have to deal with. It's a monster effect negation. So there's a lot to deal with. Generally, if they get to this point, it's very, very hard to win, okay? Now, the first thing that we have to understand when playing against Chimera is always put your end board in defense mode when you're going first. So why does this matter? Well, there's actually a card in the Chimera archetype called the Chimera the Illusion Beast. And what this card does is it's essentially an illusion monster that can be made using Chimera the Flying Mystical Beast plus one or more illusion monsters. It attacks a number of times equal to the amount of fusion monsters it used. So either two, three, or four or more. And the fact that it's an illusion means that any monster it battles does not actually die by battle. And then it has this effect. If this battles a monster at the end of the damage step, you can activate it to make that monster's attack zero. So what does that mean if we have a on board attack position monster. Well, he's going to crash into this. And then from there, he's going to make the attack zero and be able to attack two or three times. And this monster doesn't die at a zero attack. So we get OTK'd by that monster. So that's why we always want to put our monsters in defense mode. We can't get OTK'd really easily, barring something rogue like a Nibiru or like a Kaiju. We're not getting OTK'd. So that's the first thing you have to know. The next thing you have to know is the words battle phase is very, very important. It might be one of your only chances of actually winning against this deck because what does it do when we say battle phase? Well, the words battle phase are a magic word because it can actually bait out the Chimera Fusion, which says during the main phase. This card can only be used during the main phase to fuse. If we say try to go to battle phase, it could nine times out of 10 prompt the Chimera Fusion player to actually flip the fusion because they don't want to lose it, right? They want to get some value out of it. What does that mean when they're using it when we have no board? Well, it means that they're not going to be able to summon out the Guardian Chimera, which is the main card that they're going to be able to summon out off this card, which allows them to pop either one or two cards and draw into more of their hand traps. So saying the words Battle Phase could actually trigger the Chimera Fusion because they might want to put the Chimera into the grave. So they do have that recursion or better yet, the Burfamet in the grave as well. And generally they can go into something like a Magnum, the reliever which is still a quick effect pop but that's a lot better to deal with than guarding chimera right because they do that because they want the chimera fusion and the chimera king into the graveyard so if they get a even lead they're not losing their resources now the reason i say nine times out of ten is because the casual player that plays this deck will actually flip the chimera fusion but if you're playing a more skilled opponent they might actually let it go through because they don't really care about getting their cards banished they might just banish the uh, big wing burfamet and also the chimera fusion and then uh they still have the effect of the Coado as well as the effect of the Mirror Sword Knight on top of the Chimera King on the field, right? But a lot of players that play Chimera will not actually know that, and they're probably just going to immediately activate the Chimera Fusion, so they're guaranteed to get the Chimera Fusion and the Chimera the King into the graveyard. So the Magic Words Battle Phase could actually give us a fighting chance. It's essentially prompting out the Chimera Fusion to be activated for nothing. Even if we don't have Evenly, we're baiting out the Chimera Fusion, which means we're still going to be able to play in our main phase, and we don't have to deal with Guardian Chimera. So so that's just one thing that is really cool. Now, uh, let's talk about the hand traps that you guys need and what to exactly hit in this deck because those are very, very important knowing what to hit exactly with your hand traps and what cards to play. Starting with the top, Ash Blossom Enjoys Spring. Now, this is kind of weird, but you guys actually should be holding the Ash Blossom Enjoys Spring specifically for the Mirror Sword Knight. Now, if you're playing against a blind matchup and you don't know for a fact that they're playing Chimeras and they go Branded Fusion as a first action, Obviously, it would be best to ask there on the alpha and chance that they actually play pure branded. But against the Chimera, if you know explicitly that they're playing these engine in the deck, 
then you should actually allow the branded fusion to go through and not ash. It sounds weird, but the thing is they can only end on a couple of things using the branded fusion. Generally, it'd be just a mirror jade like off of an Albion banish. So that's just like a one for one card into a mirror jade as it would be in any other deck like Eldritch or like Labyrinth when they play the branded fusion, or they're going to be able to make a Rinbrum to tap into the access to Mirror Sword Knight because they can dump a Gazelle directly from the deck which requires a beast for Rinbrum, right? So with that, they can actually add a copy of the Mirror Sword Knight or the Coato. So that doesn't matter, but we want to guarantee that we do stop the Mirror Sword Knight because this is the main culprit that allows them to snowball into the full combo by going into the Big Wing Burfamet directly. So we want to stop that at all costs. And it's explicitly Mirror Sword Knight because there might be an argument you guys are thinking, oh, we could actually ask the Big Wing Burfamet. You don't want to do that because this gives them access to Big Wing Burfamet. So if the rest of their hand is engine, then they are going to be able to use something like a Chimera Fusion and use like a Beast to still go into their combo, right? So we don't want them to have Big Wing Burfamet. And in this deck, there's no other way to get an additional copy of a Burfamet or like a Mirror Sword Knight, a second Mirror Sword Knight onto the table without the normal summon. So we were guaranteed to get the value off of trading the Ash for the Mirror Sword Knight. So make sure that you guys definitely Ash the Mirror Sword Knight. I see a lot of people main deck control Knockbird, a lot of people side deck control Knockbird. The fact of the matter is, generally this card is just not very good against this deck, and I'll be honest, because the good players can actually play around it by using their first interaction as normal summon Mirror Sword Knight, add a copy of Big Wing for Fumet, and then use the effect, right? From there, adding the Chimera Fusion plus the Gazelle. Trolling there would stop the effect of the Gazelle, obviously, to add, and it would stop some other things, but it's not that great because they're still going to be able to resolve some of their other effects. If they have something like a Branded Fusion, they can obviously still stick a Mirror Jade onto the table. If you don't really have anything else to side, I would say you could still potentially side it because a lot of Chimera players are still playing the Patchwork Engine, which personally I think is awful, but it would definitely punish them because this would just mean that they have dead cards in their hand that they cannot use in their Droll. So if you don't have anything better to side, then I can definitely see siding in Droll in. But the way that I'm currently playing the deck myself is that we are playing like Fusion Destiny, as you guys saw in uh, my buddy Anthony across his deck profile from the Utah Regionals. So we are playing like a lot more Fusion cards, so Droll doesn't really matter for our deck specifically. But I think against opponents that are playing things like Fire for Patchwork, then this card could be actually decently okay. So if you don't have anything better to side, you could definitely consider it. But for certain variants of the deck, it's just not very effective because they're still going to be able to go into the Chimera. Still going to be able to rip a card. The thing with hand traps against this deck is they have to be high impact like Ash Blossom because you're ripping a card out of your own hand. And then on top of that, if they're able to still play and get into Chimera, then you're going to lose two cards, right? You're losing a card in the end phase again. So you're down to four cards and you're trying to push past a plethora of recursion that they have. So it's going to be really difficult. Nibiru is actually awful against this deck, and even though the lines are always able to get nibiru it doesn't really matter because they're still going to be able to have the Chimera in the graveyard. End phase, again, we talked about this, like they rip another card out of your hand, you start with four cards, they have Chimera, the King of Phantom Beast in the graveyard. Yes, it will turn off the effects of Mirror Sword Knight and Coato in the graveyard because they don't control a Chimera. However, they can still use the effect to banish. They still play a bunch of hand traps. They can still bring back the Chimera Fusion to their hand because they can do that even if Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast is in the graveyard. And then from there, they can set that, use the Nib token to still make Guardian Chimera. So it doesn't really matter. You're almost like negging a card. So that's why it's just not very good in my opinion. Definitely don't side in the Nibiru against this deck. If you're already main decking it, take it out for something better. Ghost Spell is also not very good against this deck. A lot of people are siding it in for the sheer fact that it does hit Chimera the King of Phantom Beasts. But at that point, it's just a little bit too late. So they're already getting the resource into the grave. There is one thing that you can actually catch them off guard with Ghost Spell. And I will say is using it on the effect of Chimera Fusion to add back to the hand from the graveyard. Because this is the main way that they're able to set up the Guardian Chimera play on your turn, right? So preventing them from adding back the Chimera Fusion could gain a lot of value there. The unfortunate thing about all of this is you do have to wait until they resolve all of their combos. So that means they're still going to rip an additional card out of your hand at the end phase. And if they happen to already open another Chimera Fusion or Hand Traps or like a Mirror Jade even, it might be really hard for you to win with four cards in your hand, right? Because of the end phase discard and we're losing a card in the form of Ghost Spell. So that's why I don't think this card is very good. It's decently playable if you have nothing better to side, but just be aware of that. Now let's talk about some of the effect negations, Infinite Impermanence, Ghost Mourner, and Effect Veiler. 
for these cards specifically, we do want to hold them for the Burfermet because they don't interact with the Mirror Sword Knight, right? Mirror Sword Knight is a quick effect that can be used on either player's turn. So using that on Mirror Sword Knight would just be a huge punish. They are going to change the effect to our negation and that's just going to be a huge blowout. So you want to wait until they bring out the Big Wing Burfermet and use these cards on Burfermet specifically. The caveat to this is if they already have Chimera Fusion in hand alongside a copy of a Fusionable Monster, then they could chain to dodge it or if they play something Something like the books they could also chain that on top to protect the burfamet so it's not a guaranteed resolution unfortunately with these cards which is a little bit of a downside but another thing that you could potentially do is if for whatever reason you happen to decide that you want to play around like a chimera fusion or a book of moon you could actually use the infinite impermanence on something like the chimera the king of phantom beasts now just beware if the Coatl Cornfield is already in the graveyard, then this is obviously not something we can chance because this can negate something like an Imperm or Effect Failure, right? But in the offhand chance where they don't actually have the Coatl in rotation in the graveyard, and you decide that, hey, we don't want to play around the chance of them having a Book of Moon, we'll let them resolve the Big Wing Burfamet. And by using the Imperm on the Chimera of the King of Phantom Beasts is actually a lot of value because what it does here is, number one, it negates the effect where it rips in the end phase, right? So we're effectively choosing the card that they're ripping out of our hand by ditching the effect failure or the imperm. Number two, it actually negates the continuous effect of where this card's name becomes Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast while on the field or in the graveyard, which is specifically what they need in order to bring back the Chimera Fusion from the graveyard, right? So if they don't have a Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, then that means they're not gonna be able to bring back the Chimera Fusion. However, this can backfire if they do have other fusion spells like Polymerization with the Patchwork Engine. Then they could just activate that, fuse off with the Chimera of the King of Phantom Beasts, go into something like Drago Stapelia, and then because Chimera is in the graveyard, it will be treated as Flying Mythical Beast again so they can bring back the Chimera Fusion. So it's a little bit tricky there. I would say generally still, I prefer just chancing the Imperm, Effect Veiler, or the Mourner on the actual Burfamet so they don't proceed any further. But I'm just saying in the weird circumstance that could come up in certain metagames, then that could be something we consider actually hitting the King of Phantom Beasts while they do not have the Coatl in the graveyard. Another card that's actually a huge blowout against this deck, like a one-sided game-ending blowout, is Retaliating C. This card says when your opponent activates a spell card that includes an effect that special summons a monster, quick effect, you special summon this card from your hand. If summoned this way while this card is face up on the field, any card sent to the graveyard is banished. This is effectively a D shifter that is chained directly to Chimera Fusion, which means they have to commit their resources, they commit whatever they have, Big Wing Burfamet, Gazelle, and also Chimera Fusion, all get banished, they don't get any of the effects, and it's just really, really tricky for them to get rid of the Retaliating C on top of all of that. So generally, they would probably, in response to Retaliating C, make something like a Guardian Chimera instead to then pop your Retaliating C and then draw cards. But that means their opening combo is a lot weaker because they're not going to be able to get back the Chimera Fusion. They're not going to be able to discard a card in the end phase. And it just makes it so you're up ahead by a lot. The nice thing about Retaliating C is there's absolute crossover against other things like Pure Branded, against Purely as well. Uh, it's decently good. It's not the best, but it's playable. Against other decks like Runic, it's decently good. If you play something like, like a Contact C as well, you can search it off Retaliating C. So this is a potential option. I hope no one sides this because it's an absolute blowout against this deck, but it's good for you guys to know. Obviously, Shifter is also a blowout. Generally, I would prefer, if you guys are playing Shifter, to use this in the draw or standby phase to play around Triple Tactics Talent. It's absolutely imperative that you do shotgun this, I think, in my opinion. But just bear no, bear in mind that they can actually set the Chimera Fusion still and potentially try and make Guardian Chimera on your turn. So if that's something that you can't really risk losing to, then potentially you could wait until they activate Chimera Fusion and then chain Shifter in the main phase and chance the fact that they have tactics, but then on the offhand chance that they actually get blown out by it because they're banishing all the fusion monsters. So little key things to uh, think about there. The Bistils are actually quite bad against this deck. I know a lot of people think that they're decently good because you're getting some value. You're able to banish the Mirror Sword Knight, which is a light monster on the effect of Burfamet that targets the Mirror Sword Knight to bring itself back. 
But the issue with the Bistios is it does put a body on board on turn one. So that turns on Guardian Chimera, meaning they're going to be able to pop the Magnemut and then draw two cards as well. So they can potentially draw huge extenders like Branded Fusion, maybe Defusion as well if they play that, or like insane hand traps like Ash, stuff like that. So that's why I don't really like the Bistios. If you're playing something like Dragon Link where they already are incorporated in the deck, then that's fine. But I wouldn't go out of my way to side it specifically for this deck for that reason that the Guardian Chimera becomes live. Board breakers are absolutely horrible against this deck. They obviously do nothing. They do turn off the Chimera because they puts Chimera to the grave, so they're not able to Coato or Mirror Sword Knight, but it doesn't matter. You're taking a huge neg one, and the Chimera player has all the resources in their graveyard, infinite recursion on the following turn. You will lose. The board really doesn't matter. It's more of preventing them from getting into their combo because the minute that they do get to that line of combo, the game is really, really hard to win going second. You have to break their board, and you have to account for the crackback on the following turn because the Chimera Fusion probably has player have probably has seven cards in their hand they have the chimera fusion and the gazelle again they're just going to rinse and repeat and then nuke your board and hopefully go for a game the other thing is actually triple deck this talent this card is decently good because they're always going to be using the mirror sword knight in your draw phase generally or they're going to be using some kind of monster effect whether it's the garden chimera off of the chimera fusion or so on and so forth this tactics thrust allows you to access a lot of things not only non-engine, but also into your engine. If you're playing something like a cast hero, you could tap into like a terraforming, so it's always good there. Cosmic Cyclone, I see a lot of people advocating for this card to use specifically to snipe the Chimera Fusion in the drop phase because Chimera Fusion cannot be chained unless it's in the main phase. However, we do have to remember that Cornfield Coato exists, so that is an explicit out that's in tandem in, in the combo that is sent to the graveyard that negates Cosmic Cyclone. So I definitely wouldn't recommend Cosmic Cyclone specifically because Coato is a direct counter to that. Even the match, again, we talked about at the beginning of the video, this card could be decently good because it does clear the board, potentially baiting out Chimera Fusion as well. The issue is it's a lot like a board wipe. It doesn't really affect their cards in the graveyard or in the hand. And then on top of that, you lose your battle phase. So I don't really like this card against this deck. I would definitely prefer to play hand traps to stop them from getting to that point. Dimensional Barrier is obviously the number one card that we can side going first. Call Fusion. It's really, really hard for the player to come back, but just make sure that uh, you do have Crossout Designator in mind because a lot of branded Chimera players are actually siding Crossout Designator with the barrier because there's no counterplay to Dimensional Barrier. So we need a way to stop the barrier from resolving. So Crossout is kind of like the go-to option at the current metagame in the time. So just make sure that you do account for Crossout Designator. Other thing is they could also chain Chimera Fusion if you're responding to uh, with barrier to something like a branded Fusion. So just bear in mind that there could be repercussions. Obviously, when the Chimera Fusion would resolve, then that Fusion monsters still negated so they're not going to be able to guardian chimera but they will be able to put something like chimera the king of phantom beasts on the board which could be annoying when it does stick on the board because in the graveyard it has a recursion effect right so just bear in mind about those little things when you do play barrier and then the last going first card actually is anti-spell fragrance obviously this is a lot like barrier where they cannot activate spells i would say barrier is way better because it's just a blanket card that can be chained in response to removal it's just way better against the metagame against purely as well so definitely would prefer barrier but for if for some reason you are also looking for more go first cards then anti-spell fragrance is definitely another option other than that that's all about all i had for the video if you guys have any tips or tricks or ways to beat this deck, definitely let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.